Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. One thing that I talk about a lot here is off-grid cooking. And most of what I've covered so far have been home-based cooking methods that you could use during blackouts or long-term disasters. But if you need to bug out, you probably won't be able to carry a lot of those with you, especially if you have to go on foot. So today we're going to be talking about off-grid cooking methods that you can take anywhere. Now it's important to understand that you don't need all of these things that we're going to be talking about today. This is just really to go over the strengths and weaknesses of some of the options that are out there to give you a better idea of what would probably work best for you and your family. The first off-grid cooking method that you can take anywhere is an Nesbitt stove. You can find these in several sizes, but the one that I have is the ultralight folding pocket stove. It came with six 14 gram solid fuel tablets and the whole thing weighs just 6.3 ounces. The fuel tablets can burn at 1300 degrees Fahrenheit and the manufacturer claims that they can boil water in around 8 minutes, although that hasn't always been my experience. Factors like wind can cause it to take longer, so be prepared to use more fuel tablets than what you think you may need. And if you're in a situation where you need to add additional fuel to get water to a boiling point, it's best to go ahead and do that before the first tablet completely burns out. And to do that, remove your container and break up the new tablet, then place it on the stove so that the first tablet will ignite the pieces of the new one. And you can use other fuel sources with these, like alcohol stoves, tea light candles, or natural materials like sticks, but that's probably going to be easier to do with one of their larger stoves so you'll actually have room to place those things where you need them. And in all honesty, this is probably my least favorite of the methods that I'll talk about today. The fuel tablets smell like fish, and I do have some concerns about toxicity, even though the manufacturer claims that they're not toxic. Another issue that I have with them is that they can be a little bit difficult to light. The best way that I found to get them going is to use stormproof matches. These burn hot enough and long enough to get them going. If you want to use a ferro rod, your best bet will be to scrape some of the tablet into a fine powder and let your sparks land on that. And even though I do have some issues with these kind of solid fuel tablets, they do have some legitimate real world uses. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're lightweight and they're very stable. So that means that something like this ultralight pocket stove with a few fuel tablets would be very good to keep in a lighter kit like a get home bag or your vehicle. Also, if you're in a survival situation and you need to get a fire going in less than ideal circumstances, they could be helpful since they burn for up to 12 minutes. The next off-grid cooking method that you can take anywhere is a canteen or bottle cook set. And what I like about them is that they're designed to be an all-in-one cooking and water transportation system. And at a minimum, they'll either include a water water bottle or canteen, a cooking cup with lid, and a stove. And the stoves, even though they're very simple, they can be used with a wide range of fuel sources. You can use them with alcohol stoves, natural materials, and you can even use them with the solid fuel tablets that we talked about a second ago. My bottle cook set was made by Pathfinder and it came with some additional items as well. These include some fire starting discs, a ferro rod, a spoon fork combo, a fish mouth spreader for picking up the water bottle from a fire and also suspending the cup over one, and then also a bag to hold everything. And that entire kit weighs around two and a half pounds. Now my canteen cook set is just a hodgepodge of items that I've picked up from various places over the years. The canteen is an Algin Oasis, which is made of the same tough material as their other water bottles, but you won't be able to boil water inside of it because it is plastic. The cup is genuine US military issue, probably from the 70s or 80s, and the stove was ordered online within the past couple of years. But one thing I do need to add to it is a lid for that cup so that it can boil water a little faster. If you'd rather have a stainless steel canteen that you can boil water in directly, then you can pick up a canteen cook set from Pathfinder as well. And since it includes everything that I would need to cook and boil water, my bottle cook set is my first choice for what I keep in my bug out bag. I'd probably also bring an alcohol stove along as well just to make things a little bit faster and easier while I'm on the move. But if it takes me a little bit longer than I think it will to get to my destination, then I can always fall back on using natural materials with that stove as well. If you plan on transporting alcohol fuel in your bug out bag, it would be a very good idea to pick up a dedicated fuel bottle like this one by Trangia. This is their 0.3 liter model and it's the smallest one that they got. Fuel bottles like these make it very easy to dispense fuel into your alcohol stove without having to worry about spilling any. And you can rotate the knob at the top of it to prevent it from being pressed down while you're traveling. 
But that being said, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and put that fuel bottle and your alcohol stove in something like a Ziploc bag or another kind of waterproof container just to protect the other stuff in your pack. As far as transporting all this goes, the bag that comes with the Pathfinder bottle set is big enough to accommodate all of its parts as well as the alcohol stove and fuel bottle. So overall, it's a pretty cost effective and space efficient way to go about performing basic cooking tasks, storing your water, and it also gives you some fuel redundancy as well. The next off-grid cooking method that you can take anywhere is the Solo Stove Light. It's a gasifier stove, so it burns hot with very little smoke, and this is useful if you're trying to keep a low profile. The stove itself is a very simple design. It just has two parts, and it weighs around nine ounces, but keep in mind that you're gonna need to have cooking containers. You're also gonna need something to store water in, so that's gonna increase the overall weight of your kit. The light can use natural materials like sticks and pine cones, as well as an alcohol stove. And the carrying case that it comes with, it does have room for the entire stove along with an alcohol stove if you want to add one of those but I would recommend that you pack those things in something like a bandana or a sock because if you don't they can rattle quite a bit and make a lot of noise. Since it's so compact it would do very good in something like a bug out bag and it would probably be my second choice behind my bottle cook set. The next off-grid cooking method that you can take anywhere is the jet boil flash. This is an excellent choice if your primary concern is just boiling water as fast as you can so you can keep moving. They also don't produce any smoke, but they can be a little bit noisy. Now, the sound that they produce may actually be offset by the fact that you're not going to have to be traipsing around the woods gathering up materials for a fire, and since it boils water so quickly, the stove might not actually run long enough to draw any attention to you. And the flash does boil water faster than literally anything else that I've ever used. The manufacturer claims that it can boil water in as little as 100 seconds, and that claim does line up with my experiences using it. It can produce up to 9,000 BTUs, and the flux ring at the bottom of the cups helps contain that heat, making the system very efficient. The cup and burner lock together to prevent the cup from tipping over, and that's a good thing because the water boils so violently that the cup would probably fall off without that feature. The flash does have a built-in igniter, but you could use a lighter or a ferro rod as a backup if that breaks down. Just be sure to keep your hands far away from that burner as you're igniting it manually. Now, one thing I don't like about it is that it does rely on fuel canisters and it doesn't have any backup fuel options, although the canisters themselves can last for a long time. One like this that has 230 grams of fuel can boil two cups of water 55 times, although in real world use, you're probably gonna get less than that. If you wanna use something else to cook with, like a pot, then you can get a pot adapter which just sets down on the burner. And while the burner on the flash is adjustable, it's really not all that well suited for more delicate cooking operations. It's really designed more for preparing things like freeze dried meals, boiling water to kill microorganisms, or heating it up for things like soups, coffee, or tea. If you want something similar to this that's more well suited to actual cooking, then the Jetboil Mini Mo would be worth looking into. For storage, the whole kit nests together within the cooking cup and it weighs 13.1 ounces minus the fuel. Now, if you want the fuel can to nest inside of the cup, you're gonna need to get the 100 gram fuel cans because the 230 gram, like what I have, is just too big to fit down inside. Because systems like this are basically just miniature gas stoves, most people are gonna be able to figure them out pretty easily. So I think that makes them a very good choice if you have somebody in your family who maybe doesn't know how to build fires using natural materials, they're not the most experienced outdoors, this would still give them a very good way to prepare meals, boil water to disinfect it in case y'all get separated. The next off-grid cooking method that you can take anywhere is the firebox stove, and this is the one that you want to have with you during the end of the world as we know it. It's the most versatile option when it comes to ways that you can set it up, meaning you can cook different things with it, and you can also use more fuel sources with this than you can pretty much anything else. During normal times, you can use things like wood pellets or charcoal. This would be good for just backyard use or if you want to take it hunting or camping. And the firebox stove can also be set up to use common backpacking and bushcrafting fuels like alcohol stoves and solid fuel tablets. Then of course you can use natural materials like sticks to get it going as well. The one that I have is the entire kit that comes with the Gen 2 firebox, 
four fire sticks, an ash pan, a boil plate, an adjustable fire grate, the small and extended grill plates, and a carrying case. The entire thing weighs 2.7 pounds, but if you just want to get a more basic kit, then that weighs around two. It feels a little heavier than what I expected it to, but the materials that it's made of are very heavy duty, so I think this is a pretty bomb-proof setup, provided you don't do something just completely stupid with it. Now, while some may opt for the more basic kit, just to keep things simple, the boil plate is very useful for some supporting the sides of containers as you're boiling water, which is going to reduce the chances of them spilling. Even though I used it for this burger, the extended grill plate would be nice if you live near a body of water and might depend on fishing as a long-term food source. Other models like the Firebox Nano and the Firebox Titanium are much lighter than what I have, so they would probably be a better option if your purpose for this is just to use it in a bug out bag. But whichever model you choose, all of them are compact when folded up so they won't take up very much room in your pack. The main downside to the Firebox stove is that there is a learning curve to using it. Trying to figure out all the different configurations that you can use with it is going to take some time and then it will take some practice to master using it with natural materials. And if you're gonna be depending on natural materials primarily with this, you do probably need to have a significant amount of fire starters in your kit as well. The next off-grid cooking method that you can take anywhere is the BioLite camp stove. This is a unique way to cook off-grid since it can also be used to charge cell phones and other small electronics. It uses natural materials like sticks as fuel, but it also runs very well on wood pellets. This would be more useful if you're using the stove at home or on a hunting or camping trip. BioLite does have their own pellets that you can pick up, but they're a little bit pricey. The Pit Boss pellets that I got locally seem to run well and were less than $10 for a 20 pound bag. So those should last a little while. The biggest downside of the BioLite is that it relies on an electronic device to operate. If that fan goes down, the stove won't be as effective since it can't circulate air on its own. Another big downside to the BioLite is that you really do need to purchase the additional accessories for it to get the most out of it. In my opinion, the kettle pot is an absolute must since it can be used to boil water and it rests right on top of the stove. This will allow you to cook things like noodles or heat up soups and freeze dried meals and the vents on the bottom of it are designed to keep flames away from the fan unit. The stove itself weighs just over two pounds and the kettle weighs around one. So that gives the overall kit a weight of around three pounds but it's still going to be a little bit more bulky than a lot of the other options that we've talked about and that's an important consideration if you're going to be putting this in some sort of bag. Another accessory that you can get for the camp stove is a grill attachment that will allow you to cook things like hot dogs and burgers and in all honesty you're probably not going to be taking that with you during an emergency but it is a decent grill for individuals or small families. I know we'll probably be using it on a camping trip later on because it is kind of fun to use. It has a small lid on the front of it so that you can add fuel as needed without having to remove the entire grill top. Another slightly bulky but still portable option would be the Kelly Kettle Scout. I've reviewed the full size Kelly Kettle Base Camp on the channel in a few other videos. These are just really high quality pieces of equipment. They're excellent for boiling water. You can get larger kits with them that you can do other things with like grill or cook eggs, stuff like that. But if you want to see more off-grid cooking methods that you can use, especially things that you can use more at home or once you reach your bug out retreat, if you have one of those, then be sure to check out these videos. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.